Wow. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Good morning, sinners. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> saints. Might want to turn off Laurel's my, microphone my back on. there. <laughs> well, we are in person this morning. We're on a live stream. We're on Spectrum Cable TV. And uh, it is very nice that we did not have an ice storm this morning. Um, last week, um, you know, it looked all smooth and, and all of that, but I, I got to tell you, it's like ducks on a pond. You know, it's very smooth on top, but we were paddling like crazy underneath um, to make that Zoom and live stream happen. And I'm so grateful to, to everybody who um, shifted and pivoted, and I'm especially grateful to Nate Trost um, for figuring out how to live stream that Zoom and um, make that happen. So if you joined us, whatever way you joined us last week, we're grateful. We are back in person here at 11 o'clock this, this Sunday morning. We are in person at 8.30 and 11 every Sunday morning. And if you are watching or participating from afar, we'd love to have you try it out sometime if you're in town or nearby or just feel like it. We are still practicing COVID protocols to the best of our ability. We are asking that all people, except speakers, be masked um, at all times in the building and that you find the brown pad near you in the pew and legibly write your name and contact information down in that. The Holy Spirit has called us here, whether we know it or not, the Holy Spirit brings us together to worship and May that same spirit fill our hearts in this time together. Good morning. It's great to see so many hearty people out on this frigid morning. <laughs> A reminder that uh, it is winter and we should expect this. And we should expect some more winter weather this evening, as I understand, right? So hopefully you all will be uh, safe over whatever happens this coming uh, 24 hours or so. My name is Knut Hansen. I'm serving as liturgist and co-host this morning. Uh, Carolyn Stanford will be reading scripture. Sean Stafford and Maggie Wolford will be uh, offering their gifts of music for our enjoyment. The tech team is making it all happen in the booth. We have Mark and Nate and Tyler and Alex there this morning. And our ushers are ensuring that we're well taken care of, got our bulletins and are being safe. Keith and uh, Tom. We have moder- moderators on our chat, and you'll be invited to participate during uh, and invited to add your thoughts and prayer requests. No, you're not required, of course, but if you do want to do so, you need to ha- be signed into your YouTube account to, uh, to make those personal comments. And be in mind, don't make anything too personal because they will be viewed by everyone. <laughs> We are gathered in worship this morning, whether we are here or far away, and I hope our brothers and sisters in the Carolinas are safe. I understand they're getting some tough weather there, snow and ice. On this Sunday, we celebrate God's gift to the world and our opportunity to live a Jesus-filled, hope-filled life. And let us begin our worship with prayer. Please join in on the words on the screen. Holy One, through signs signs of of unexpected unexpected grace, you reveal your glory to all the world. Open our eyes to the hidden and surprising wonders you perform, that we may believe with our minds and trust with our hearts and testify with our lives that you are alone, our Lord of all. We ask it in the name of the Christ, through whom we see your wonder and touch your heart. Amen. Our first song this morning will be from the Green Book, number 3154, Draw the Circle Wide, and we'll have some description of how to sing that from Michelle. Oh, that was me. Hi. It's fun having my husband run my sound. 
Uh, this song is in the green hymnal. It says black in the bulletin, but here's, here's your handy key to that. If it starts with a three and has four digits, it's in the green hymnal. We were gifted these by an anonymous donor just before COVID happened. And we're going to start getting more and more into using this song. This song, uh, Draw the Circle Wide, you've heard it in anthem form. Our choir has done that a couple of times. Um, this music was written by Mark Miller, who's a friend of mine, and was the music director at Drew when I was in seminary there. And um, I learned this song while he was writing it. And uh, so it's published a little bit differently. But Maggie and I are going to walk you through. Music people, you will see that there's a lot of repeats there. We're not taking them. <laughs> all right so skip to the second ending each time and we're just going to sing all the parts through once if we could have the screen up on the back wall that would be great because that hasn't happened this morning and uh, maggie and i are going to lead you through it sean's going to play the first part through once so you can hear it stand if you feel like it if you feel like that's a lot to take in and you need to sit do that too <laughs> the words are on screen about pie for the past couple of weeks, wellness pie, how God made us to be whole. And yes, this is backwards on purpose because um, I'm not giving away the answers before I. And so God created us to be whole. And so the first week, we're, we're actually talking about eight different dimensions of wholeness and wellness. The first week we talked about what kind of wellness? Physical. Absolutely. We talked about trying to keep yourself safe from COVID by maybe, you know, if you choose to worship from home, we talked about keeping yourself safe and, and that kind of thing. This past week, when I ate a cookie in front of you all, we talked about what kind of wholeness? Intellectual. Talked about always learning. Never stop learning. We talked about the different programs we have at the church. Um, adult education this morning, we learned about the Lord's Prayer which technically overlaps into the spiritual category. But so this is, this is us. This is our pie. This is the pie that God made us to be with a wiggly crust. We were made whole by God. We started by talking about physical wholeness, intellectual. And this week, we're going to talk about emotional wholeness and wellness. I've drawn this as a pie, but just know that in your life, they overlap and they intertwine and God created them. I guess I could have gone with a spider web or something, but that would not have been as tasty. Um, after worship, these pieces of pie will be outside. And there are some printouts that I also put together with the, all the eight dimensions. So you can get, get a sneak preview. Spoiler alert. And so this banana cream pie, banana cream is my favorite pie, by the way, in case anyone was curious. 
Um, Ben was very sad that it was not key lime because I almost went for the key lime. But we'll get to key lime. For emotional wellness, I wanted to talk about the idea of being okay with what you're feeling. God created in us all sorts of feelings. God did not just create the, how are you this morning? Good. How are you this morning? Feeling, which is kind of meh. God didn't create just the, I'm going to smash stuff feeling. Although, depending on the day with my kids, I feel like that's true. But God created in you all, all sorts of feelings. And so part of this emotional wholeness, this piece of the pie that is slightly frozen. So if you bring one home, just give it a little while. Um, This piece of the pie is about being okay with all of those feelings that God gave you. Not only being okay with them, but letting them flow through you. If you are anxious, if you are sad, if you are overjoying and, you know, raising your hands in the back of the sanctuary because you love draw the circle wide. All of, that was me, all of those feelings were created by God for us to feel. Try not to stuff them. If you're mad at your parents, if you're mad at your friends, it's okay if you're mad at God. It's okay. God created those feelings in us, and God didn't create in us any feelings that God can't handle. And so as we contemplate our emotional wholeness and our emotional wellness, just know that God created us to have feelings, and feelings are okay. Amen. Bye, Pi.
consider the heavens above. Oh Lord, what is man that you're mindful of us? Still you say that we're wonderfully, wonderfully made. You promise that you'll never leave me, oh Lord, and that you hem me in both behind and before. reading this morning is 1st Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 through 11 as written in the message what I want to talk to you about now is the various ways God's spirit gets worked into our lives this is complex and often misunderstood but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable remember how when you didn't know God led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everybody else did it, it's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well as we can. For instance, by using your heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be damned. Nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is master, without the insight of the Holy Spirit. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God alone is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God. Dog, God decides who gets what and when. So if I say spiritual gifts, would you know what I'm talking about? Would you have a basic understanding of what I'm talking about? Well, when we talk about spiritual gifts in the church, we're talking about the ways that God has gifted us with something to do that shows who God is, as Paul says, and something to do to bring wholeness to the world. That's what Paul is trying to convey to this church at Corinth. My job in any congregation is the same as Paul's was in his, to listen for God's call in you. And with you. 
to help each one in the congregation to identify the gifts that God has given you and to help you put those gifts to use in the world. If you think about it, it's every pastor's job to do that. So if a spiritual gift is something that you've been given intrinsically in yourself that shows who God is and brings about wholeness in the world, would you have any idea what that would be in your own life? Our Companions in Christ study, when it runs, has a um, component that's a spiritual gifts inventory. We, we sit down to take a, a many-page quiz, actually, to determine what our spiritual gifts might be. And more than one group of folks in that study has been very, very surprised um, as people discover that there are things that, that we call spiritual gifts that they, they just knew they do and had never considered as a gift from God. We don't all have to have the same gifts. We're not intended for that. And our gifts don't have to line up perfectly on that list that Paul gave to the Corinthian church that Carolyn just read. Surely there are more gifts in God's great creation than these nine. But we all do have gifts. We're all expected to do something with them. Because with them, God intends to care for the world. And if there ever was a time (laughs) calling for our gifts, it's now. Our world is imperfect and breaking under strains so great. There are wrongs to right and truths to tell and hearts to heal. There will never be a time when our world doesn't need the church and those in it. There will never be a time when our world doesn't need the ones who listens for God. And let God call us to be the peacemakers and the truth tellers and the healing touch givers. This world and our path through it and our own lives not just about ourselves and our lives and what we do each day. We are connected with everyone by virtue of the fact that God fills each of us with that spark of spirit that names us and claims us as God's own people. If we are true to our nature as God's chosen and claimed people, We won't be able to ignore that spark. We will not be able to ignore the call of the Spirit, even if we try. That Spirit will nudge us to do things we might never have expected to do. It will stir us when we witness pain and suffering. It will poke us to stand up and to speak out. That's the point of this special Sunday in United Methodist Churches. We call it Human Relations Sunday. God's Spirit connects with us so that we will connect with each other and heal the world in love and grace. And this Sunday in the church, Human Relations Day, coincides with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday because his life and his work show that spark of spirit. that powerful work of the Spirit. But there are two sides to living in that knowledge and living out that life. The uncomfortable side of the Spirit's work in our life is that listening to it, following it, might just get us in trouble. Dr. King's life shows us that. And the even more uncomfortable side of the Spirit's work in our life is that it is possible that we might just die doing what it leads us to do. Dr. King's death shows us that. But we can't ignore that spark and this life. We can't make it a simple head game that we play for an hour or so each week. We can't relegate it to it being our security blanket in times of personal distress. 
This God life is for all times and all places. This God life is what we were made to live. The, the comfort side, so there is a flip side. There is a comfort, comfort and comforting and maybe comfortable side to this. Working when the Spirit calls. We will be equipped for it if we're not already. God doesn't call us to do what God will not equip us for. Ask any clergy person if they were ready to be a pastor. (laughs) I don't know any, and I know lots of them. But not one would say that we were ready and felt prepared for this work. God equips us for what God calls us to do. There's a saying, you should, you know, you cross stitch it and put it on your wall if you like. Um, God doesn't call the equipped, God equips the called. If we're feeling pulled towards something, it's, it's likely because God is calling us. If we're feeling pulled to give money, it's probably because we can afford to or we can find a way to. If we're feeling pulled to organize something, it's probably because we have the skills for it, the capacity for it. Or we know enough people to bring together to make something happen. God may stretch us. God may challenge us. But never beyond what we're ultimately capable of doing. Most of us, most of the time, are mostly afraid to find out what we can do. So we do as little as possible. But there are times that call us out of that thinking, times when we are called to be everything God has made us to be and more. They're not all global. They're not all immense. Though some might be. We know they exist. We know there are problems and hurts to be healed. Most of us have had our consciences poked at one time or another, about something deep. And we may or may not have ignored the poking. What times like this that we live in now remind us of is that we're called to be more and to do more than serve ourselves. We are called to heal the world and open its eyes to the realm of God. It's what Jesus preached more than anything else was the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. Those who have eyes, look. Those who have ears, listen. Those who have hearts, open them because it is this close. We are more than capable of doing all of that and more even if we can't see it. The man whose life and work we honor this weekend saw it. He maintained that it is precisely the job of the faithful, the job of the church to bring about what he would call the acceptable year of the Lord. The kingdom of God. When all is made right. Now I want you to hear Dr. King's words as we honor him this weekend. Always remember that his title was actually the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was always a preacher first and foremost. Our book study group, you can still join in, is reading a series of his uh, sermons collected under the title A Knock at Midnight, and you're welcome to join with that. But these that I'm going to read this morning are excerpts from a sermon called Guidelines for a Constructive Church, given in Atlanta in June 1966. A word about his language, it reflects the conventions of the 60s. There's a lot of men in this conversation. Um, I I have not changed his words. (laughs) And I am aware, very aware of the irony of reading these words in my white southern woman voice. But they are important to hear. They are more powerful than whatever the reader looks like. And wherever she comes from. So hear him. um, Through me anyway. 
Wish I could do him justice. Some people are suffering. Some people are hungry this morning. Some people are still living with segregation and discrimination this morning. And I'm going to preach about it. I'm going to fight for them. And the God that I serve and the God that called me to preach told me that every now and then I'll have to go to jail for them. Every now and then I'll have to agonize and suffer for the freedom of his children. I even may have to die for it. But if that's necessary, I'd rather follow the guidelines of God than to follow the guidelines of men. The church is called to set free those that are captive. To set free those that are victims of the slavery of segregation and discrimination. Those who are caught up in the slavery of fear and prejudice. And then the church, if it's true to its guidelines, must preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know the acceptable year of the Lord is the year that is acceptable to God because it fulfills the demands of God's kingdom. Some people... Some people feel that that's talking about some period beyond history, but I say to you this morning that the acceptable year of the Lord can be this year. And the church is called to preach it. The acceptable year of the Lord is any year when men decide to do right. The acceptable year of the Lord is any year when men will stop throwing away the precious lives that God has given them in riotous living. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when people in Alabama will stop killing civil rights workers and people who are simply engaged in the process of seeking their constitutional rights. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will learn to live together as brothers. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will keep their theology abreast with their technology. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will keep the ends for which they live abreast with the means by which they live. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will keep their morality abreast with their mentality. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when all of the leaders of the world will sit down at the conference table and realize that unless mankind puts an end to war, war will put an end to mankind. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks and nations will not rise up against nations, neither will they study war anymore. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will allow justice to roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty storm stream. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when every valley shall be exalted and every mountain will be made low and the rough places will be made plain and the crooked places straight and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will do unto others as they will have others do unto themselves. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men will love their enemies Bless them that curse them and pray for them that despitefully use them. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when men discover that out of of one blood God made all men to dwell upon the face of the earth. The acceptable year of the Lord is that year when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess the name of Jesus and everywhere men will cry out, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The acceptable year of the Lord is God's year. These are our guidelines. And if we will only follow the guidelines, we will be ready for God's kingdom and we will be doing what God's church is called to do. Nineteen sixty six, twenty twenty two. The acceptable year of the Lord is the year we feel the spark of the Spirit within us and we let the Spirit pull us, push us, poke us, prod us to do what we need to do. In 2022, can we stay alert to that call? Especially in this hurting world. 
Can we continue to be aware of the ways that we are needed in this world? And the ways that we can find our gifts. Listen to the Spirit call and be in the world without fear as the people of God. God will equip us. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Celebrate the words of Dr. King that still ring true, that still have such a surplus of meaning, even 55 years later. I'm going to invite us into a time of silence and then um, into a breath prayer, I think, this morning. For those of you not familiar with that, uh, let me just explain it a little bit. 
Um, we use the silence just to, to gather ourselves and center ourselves. If you are at home participating on the live stream, please um, find a space in your brain and in your, in your room where you are just to be for a little bit. Um, if you're multitasking, stop for just a minute. It'll still be there, I promise. But to sit in the silence. And a breath prayer essentially is breathing in and out and letting the Spirit come to us. The Spirit is present with us all the time, but sometimes we have to focus to perceive it. And so the idea of a breath prayer is that it becomes part of your breathing. You think of the words to say, and as you pray them with your breathing, they become part of you. So the the idea is to bring in a breath into your body fully, with some name of God, what do you what do you call God? Um, and you know that's that's as varied as the people in the room or out of the room. What do you call God? Breathe that in, and then whatever your request is, whatever your need is, and maybe today talking about spiritual gifts, it's you know show me what my gift is, or help me be like Dr. King, or help me heal the world, or whatever personal things going on in your life, because we don't say this out loud. This is all just in and out silently. So in with the name of God and out with your need and your prayer. Does that make sense? So we're going to let the silence fill us for a moment. We'll let the, the names and the situations we've already heard this morning settle through us too. We'll come after that to a time of being able to offer prayers and close with the Lord's Prayer. But let's just sit with the breath prayer for now. If your mind is clear enough, take a breath in with the name of God and out with your prayer. In with the name of God, and out with your prayer. Just keep taking those deep breaths in. Breathe in with the name of God and out with your prayer. If you find the words of your prayer changing, that's the Spirit helping you. In with the name of God, out with your prayer. Take deep breaths in. Let that Name of God, fill you up. Out with the name of God. Out with your prayer. Holy One, you call us to breathe in and out each day, to be aware of your Spirit's presence and to allow ourselves to be filled up by it. That alone is a miracle and such a gift. Your Spirit calls us still to love, to serve, to give, to be be agents in this world of compassion and grace and justice and peace and truth. Help us to find what it is that you've given us to do. Help us to 
discern our gifts and to use them wisely and wastefully. Pour them out into the world as you have poured out your love through the gift of your Son. Holy One, we know there are problems and situations that seem insurmountable on a global scale, on a national scale, on a local scale, on a personal scale. But with your presence and with the power of your Spirit within us, we know We know that we are able to bring healing, to bring light, to bring love. And so hear us as we breathe your name in, as we pray with every exhalation, as our prayer becomes our breath and our breath becomes our prayer and our prayer becomes our life. Hold us in your embrace. Reassure us that you give us all that we need. And help us to be your people in this world with courage and with faith. We've named some names already. We've named some celebrations already, but there are so many more we keep in our hearts. Names that only you know. Situations that only you know. And so in this moment, this sacred moment of prayer and peace and breath and spirit, we lift these names we carry to you as we speak them out loud. You know each one, you know each need, yet we ask it anyway in trust and confidence and assurance. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. For we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who teaches us to pray always. Our Father, who art. come to a time of offering ourselves for God's purposes. I'm reminded that today is Human Relations Sunday and there are envelopes in the pews, uh, I think in the, uh, the books. If you uh, want to give to that, you can also give a, through the central app for Human Relations Sunday. As you know, this is one of six special offerings that the Methodist Church does throughout the year. There are other ways for us to respond to God's abundance in our lives, both through our service or through our financial resources. Please consider how you will continue to support the work of the ministries of this church and the support of God's kingdom here on earth. You may give through the central app, through direct deposit, through the website, or through um, your Offerings that you have with you this morning, there will be a basket in the main aisle. A reminder that uh, the uh, coup, uh, envelopes for next year, 2022, are outside the church office. If that's how you give, if you haven't picked yours up, we'd ask you to do so as you leave today. Let us bless the offerings. God of infinite patience and compassion, we pray that today we will offer not only our gifts of money, but also our gifts of ourselves. We think of ourselves as followers of Christ, but we realize that too rarely we deny ourselves in living out our discipleship. You gave your only Son so that in believing we would have eternal life. Our gifts today seem so small, but you can multiply them through hearts that have been warmed and softened. Please enable these gifts so that your will be done here at Central in our community, and throughout the world. 
We pray in the Savior's name. Amen. Announcements for the week. Uh, Pat Brenneman has started a Sunday school class, which takes place at 945, both in the lounge and it's available on Zoom. Uh, it's uh, a, the subject is the uh, Lord's Prayer, and it's actually there's a video series included in that by Adam Hamilton. If you've ever taken any courses or Sunday school classes with him, he is quite an impressive presenter. So uh, I ask you to join that if you can, either in person or online next week. The Monday book study continues. It's 7:30 on Zoom, a knock at midnight. Michelle talked about that. If you have the book, uh, it's uh, Jan pages 79 through 116 for tomorrow. The church office will be closed tomorrow for Martin Luther King Day. However, weather permitting, <laughs> we're planning on having a, uh, a, a volunteer day here at, at Central. Uh, if you can come, there's two uh, shifts one in the morning from 9 to 12, and one in the afternoon from 1 to 4. Uh, coffee, snacks, and lunch will be served for those who show up. If you're on the app, you'll get a, a notice will go through uh, when we know for sure whether it's happening or not. So a very good reason, if you haven't already, to <laughs> sign up for Central, Central's app. Uh, the United Methodist Men's Group is scheduled to meet this Friday on, at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, we encourage all men to join in on that. The information on how to access that is well, on the weekly e-newsletter. The uh, 2021 donation statements have been mailed out. If you have not received that, we encourage you to contact the office to make sure you do get that. Central's new Facebook page is up and running. It is found on Central UMC. If you're on the live stream, we ask that you uh, comment, share your experience for others to share along, and check the website for updates and information. If you're not on the e weekly email list, well, you can easily access that just by calling the church office on Tuesday through Friday this week to get added to that. You also can uh, download the central app that way. Anything else? This. Like, comment, and share. <laughs> like, comment, and share. Okay, we'll uh, close the service with uh, song number 2237. That's in the black book. As a fire is meant for burning. Please stand as you
into this week, into this brisk but sunny day, into whatever the universe and Mother Nature throw at us tomorrow. Go knowing that you are God's people, called by God's Spirit to live God's life in awe and wonder and praise and service to the world. Go and may the peace of the Christ go with you. Amen.